Hi guys, welcome to my YouTube channel. Don't forget to subscribe and share. Hi, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Now, let's continue with subtopic 9.2. Human Reproduction System Actually, subtopic ni best gila Because we're going to learn What happen in our body Okay So, for this subtopic We have two parts The first, we're going to discuss about A male And then, followed by female So, in this video We're going to focus in male Okay The first thing is Their reproductive system Okay, male reproductive system And then Their gamete structure means the sperm structure and then the spermatogenesis process the process producing sperm and the last one is the role of hormone in spermatogenesis okay let's start with the male reproductive system okay so as you can see here male reproductive system has three main components a pair of testes that contains seminal ferrous tubule and the seminal ferrous tubule may have the subtle cell and then the ledic cell this ledic cell is actually the interstitial uh, space okay the cell that located at the interstitial phase space of the seminiferous tubule maksudnya di antara seminiferous tubule dan seminiferous tubule yang lain akan ada ruangan okey akan ada gap so dekat gap itulah akan wujudnya ledic cell okey so this testis is very important because that is the organ involved in spermatogenesis okey and then the male reproductive system have ducts and have two main ducts, epididymis, and also the vas deferent. Function of epididymis is the site for sperm maturation and the storage area for sperm that has been produced. And then the vas deferent, the function is to conduct the sperm. And the third component is the glands. So when we talk about the glands, the main function of glands involved in secretion. So have three glands, the seminal vesicle gland. Okay, for seminal vesicle, it will secrete um, almost 60% of semen. Okay, apa tu semen? Bila berlaku ejaculation dalam lelaki, okay, bila lelaki tu mengalami ejaculation, yang keluar bersama-samanya adalah semen and also sperm. Okay, so fluid itu kita panggil sebagai semen. So the semen, 60% is been secreted by seminal vesicle. So the fluid that secreted by seminal vesicle is alkaline. And then they have mucus structure. And then they have high or rich with fructose. The fructose is actually to nourish the sperm. And then the prostate gland. The prostate gland also will secrete the alkaline fluid so this alkaline fluid is to make sure they are able to neutralize the acidity of the vagina and then the third one is buboroterol gland so this gland will secrete a fluid in a mucus okay it will secrete mucus so mucus macam kita tahu dia akan bentuk lebih pada slippery Mucus adalah cecair yang licin. So, ini penting. Pertamanya, to neutralize the urethra from urine because the urine and also the semen will be ejaculate from the male body through urethra. Maksudnya, dengan laluan yang sama. So, sebelum ejaculation itu berlaku, okay, dia akan dicuci. Uh, laluan urethra itu akan dicuci dengan mucus. Okay. And then, the... Since mucus is slippery, that is important to lubricate the penis. Okay, so now let's take a look the male reproductive structure. Okay, so we have pair of testes. Okay, left and right. And these testes is surrounded by structure called scrotum. And they are outside of abdominal body maksudnya dia berada di luar badan kita ini adalah penting supaya memastikan suhu testis itu adalah kurang 2 darjah celsius berbanding suhu badan to make sure that spermatogenesis can occur in optimum temperature 
Okay, so lelaki, ha, jangan pakai ketat-ketat. Jangan uh, berada di tempat, uh, maksudnya uh, kawal suhu itu supaya spermatogenesis boleh berlaku dalam keadaan optimum temperature. Okay, so next, okay, as we have mentioned earlier, the testes may have seminiferous tubule. Both testes eh, may have seminiferous tubule. This is the place where spermatogenesis occur. And saya dah mention tadi, the spermatogenesis tubule may have sertoli cell. This sertoli cell is very important to nourish the spermatid. And then, the, maksudnya dia akan bekalkan nutrien kepada spermatid. Apa tu spermatid? Spermatid adalah immature sperm. So, bila they get the nutrien, then they undergo differentiation, barulah dia jadi mature sperm yang kita panggil sebagai spermatozoa. So, makanan akan disupply oleh sertoli cell yang berada di dalam seminiferous tubule. And then, between the interstitial space, of the seminiferous tubule ada sel yang dipanggil sebagai ledic cell. So this ledic cell is the cell which the function is to secrete male hormone which is testosterone. So kena faham testis is very important organ in male because there is the place where spermatogenesis occur and there is the place where testosterone is being secreted. Okay. So when the a sperm is being produced in seminiferous tubule, it will be stored at epididymis here. Eh? So epididymis is one type of duct and at here, the sperm may undergo maturation. After the sperm mature, the sperm will be conducted via the vas deferens and go to the first gland, which is the seminal vesicle. So, seminal physical, we secrete the fluid and the fluid is alkaline, mucus and rich of toes. And after that, it may pass through the prostate gland and again, prostate gland also we secrete the fluid, alkaline fluid to neutralize the acidity of the vagina and then go down to barbiturate gland. So, this gland will secrete more mucus. So that it will neutralize the urethra from the urine and then it will lubricate the penis. And finally, the semen which contain of the fluid and also the sperm will be ejaculate. Alright, so here is the pathway. Start from seminiferous tubule, start at epididymis and become mature here. And then conducted via vas deferens to seminal vesicle, which the fluid is being secreted, go to prostate gland, vulvarotary gland, urethra, and it will be ejaculated out. Okay, settled about male reproductive system. Now let's focus on male gamete. Okay, so male gamete, okay, we call as sperm. Or at the term, spermatozoa. Okay, spermatozoa is referred to mature sperm. And for this, apa yang kamu kena tahu, sperm will have four main parts. Head, neck, mid piece or in some book, said middle piece and also the tail. So look at the head structure. In the head, it, ha it has acrosome. In this acrosome, contain hydrolytic enzyme. This is very important to penetrate zona pellucida. What is zona pellucida? A jelly layer of secondary oocyte of female. Nanti kita akan tengok. And then, also in the head structure, have the nucleus. So, the nucleus, uh, inilah yang akan... Mm, union, okay? Inilah yang akan bercantum dengan egg cell, Okay. Tail tak akan bercantum. Yang akan bercantum hanyalah nucleus. And then we have neck. So neck is the part which akan sambungkan bahagian head dengan other parts of the sperm. And then mid piece. Mid piece as you can see here, it contain of many mitochondria. So this is important to supply ATP because the sperm need to swim. Ah, so dia kena berenang Start daripada ejaculation Dia kena berenang 
masuk ke dalam female reproductive tract. Okay, and then renangan itu perlukan tenaga. So, this will, the ATP will be supplied by the mitochondria located at the meat piece. And then the tail, the tail is important structure for locomotion. Okay, and this tail is made up of 9 plus 2 microtubule arrangement. Okay, so hopefully you can remember for sperm or spermatozoa structure, it has head contained of acrosome, nucleus, the neck actually made up from the centriole. The meat piece contain of many mitochondria to supply ATP. And then the tail which made out of 9 plus 2 microtubule arrangement. And this is specialized for locomotion. Okay, settle. So now, kita dah settle dua perkara. Female reproductive, sorry, male reproductive system. And also the structure of male gamete. Okay, now let's proceed to the next topic okay which is spermatogenesis okay so what is spermatogenesis spermatogenesis is a type of gametogenesis maksudnya spermatogenesis ini adalah sal, adalah proses untuk penghasilan gamet okay tapi dia lebih spesifik adalah penghasilan sperm iaitu production of male gamete and it occur in seminiferous tubule of testis okay ingat eh semi spermatogenesis is process producing sperm which is the male gamete and of course it is haploid cell and it occur in seminiferous tubule of testis okay so when it start actually this process start from the fetus stage dia bermula daripada fetus lagi dia bermula daripada embryo lagi maksudnya sewaktu dalam perut lagi proses ini dah berlaku dan sampai bila ianya akan berlaku sampailah bila-bila kecuali lah lelaki itu mengalami andropause barulah spermatogenesis ini akan terhenti tapi kalau lelaki itu lelaki yang fit sehat spermatogenesis proses akan berlaku sampai akhir hayat okey so let's start so this is during the fetus stage okey okey focus focus here fetus stage Okay, it start with the primordial germ cell. This primordial germ cell is a diploid cell. So, primordial germ cell will undergo mitosis to produce more primordial germ cell. And this primordial germ cell will undergo differentiation and become spermatogonial stem cell, also diploid cell. Then spermatogonial stem cell also will undergo mitosis to produce more and more spermatogonial stem cell. And then it may undergo differentiation to become spermatogonium which also diploid cell. And then the spermatogonium also will undergo mitosis to produce more spermatogonium. And then it also will undergo differentiation and become primary spermatocyte, also diploid cell. Okay, so this is what happened in fetus stage. I repeat, during fetus stage, primordial germ cell, which is diploid, undergo mitotic division and undergo differentiation to become spermatogonial stem cell. Spermatogonial stem cell undergo mitosis to produce more spermatogonial stem cell and at the same time undergo differentiation to become spermatogonium. Then spermatogonium undergo mitotic division and at the same time undergo differentiation and it become primary spermatocyte. So at birth or during birth, all the boys has primary spermatocyte. 
Okay, boleh faham? So, maksudnya bila baby tu lahir, baby boy lahir, aa, di dalam testisnya ada banyak primary spermatocyte. Ada banyak sangat primary spermatocyte. And then, what happen next? So, this will stay remain as primary spermatocyte until the male reach puberty age. Maksudnya, dalam testis tu, dalam seminiferous tubule tu, remain sebagai primary spermatocyte. Sampailah dia mencapai umur akil balir. So, when it reach, when he reach puberty, when the boy reach puberty age, this primary spermatocyte may undergo meiosis 1. Okay? Completely undergo meiosis 1. So, from meiosis 1, at the end of meiosis 1, it may produce two daughter cell, right? Okay, and these two daughter cell are already in haploid cell. And their name is secondary spermatocyte, which is haploid. And then the secondary spermatocyte will undergo meiosis 2 completely. So, it may produce four daughter cells and each of daughter cell is haploid. And this we call as early spermatid. Or you can direct say spermatid. Okay? Spermatid. And then, this spermatid, it will undergo, this early spermatid undergo differentiation. Become spermatid. So, can you see the early spermatid? It's only like a round cell. And then after undergo differentiation, it has a structure of tail here. But still attached to seminiferous tubule. Okay. So, boleh nampak tak? Spermatid, structure-nya, the masih attached dengan seminiferous tubule. But then the spermatid get nourished from the Sertoli cell. Ingat tak tadi saya kata dalam seminiferous tubule, kita pun akan ada sel yang diberi nama sebagai Sertoli cell. So, this Sertoli cell will provide nutrient to the spermatid. And then the spermatid undergo differentiation and become mature sperm called spermatozoa. And the spermatozoa for sure is Haploid. Dapatlah sperm. Okay. Dan ingat setiap kali ejaculation yang berlaku, yang akan di eject out adalah million of sperm. So that's why lah setiap sel yang dekat atas ni dia akan buat mitosis banyak-banyak. Ha, supaya dia akan hasil, dia akan boleh menghasilkan berjuta-juta spermatozoa untuk sekali ejaculation. Okay. Now, saya repeat. Okay. The total process. Hopefully, kamu boleh mencatat ayat-ayat saya. Okay. Spermatogenesis is a process producing sperm, which is male gamete. It occur in seminiferous tubule of testis. Spermatogenesis start during fetus stage. Primordial germ cell deploy, undergo mitosis, at the same time undergo differentiation, producing spermatogonial stem cell deploy. Spermatogonial stem cell undergo mitosis, at the same time undergo differentiation to produce spermatogonium, also deploy. Spermatogonium undergo mitosis and at the same time undergo differentiation and produce primary spermatocyte which is deployed. At birth, the boy will have primary spermatocyte. When the boy reach puberty, Primary spermatocyte will undergo meiosis 1 completely to produce two secondary spermatid, two daughter cell which known as secondary spermatocyte. Okay. 
which is haploid. Then, each secondary spermatocyte will undergo meiosis to completely producing four daughter cells called early spermatid, which is haploid. Later on, early spermatid undergo differentiation to become spermatid, which is haploid. And then this spermatid get the nutrition or is being nourished by the Sertoli cell. Spermatid undergo differentiation and become spermatozoa, which is the mature sperm. The spermatozoa then will be stored at epididemis. Okay, dapat? Okay, kalau dapat, bagus. Okay, so that is spermatogenesis process. Okay, so now the last part in milk. The last part in milk is the role of hormone. Okay, the role of hormone. Okay. The role of hormone. Alright. So, the role of hormone in spermatogenesis. So, macam mana proses spermatogenesis ni berlaku? Macam mana dia punya rate boleh slow down? Semua ini bergantung kepada hormon. Okay. Hormon tak banyak, perempuan lebih banyak and lebih complicated sebab perempuan lebih banyak hormon. So, Hormon tak banyak untuk lelaki. Okay, yang warna merah ni. Ha, semua yang berwarna merah. So, kat sini kita boleh nampak lima. Okay, it start with the hypothalamus. So, hypothalamus will secrete gonadotropin releasing hormon. Hypothalamus that located in our brain will secrete gonadotropin releasing hormon. Gonadotropin releasing hormone, or the short form is GNRH, will stimulate anterior pituitary gland, also located in our brain. So, when the anterior pituitary gland is being stimulated, it will secrete two hormones, follicle stimulizing hormone and luteinizing hormone. Both hormone the target area is at the testis, but different target cell. Boleh faham? Anterior pituitary gland akan hasilkan dua hormon serentak, FSH dan LH. Dua-dua ini, the target organ is testis, but different target cell. For FSH, the target cell is Sertoli cell. And for LH, the target cell is the lady cell. Mudah nak ingat FSH. So, S is refer to Sertoli. LH. So, LH. L is refer to lady cell. Patutnya tak boleh confuse. So, this FSH will stimulate Sertoli cell to secrete or this FSH will stimulate Sertoli cell to nourish the spermatid. Okay. FSH ni akan menyebabkan Sertoli cell stimulated and akan nourish lebih banyak spermatid. So, dia akan menyebabkan more spermatid undergo differentiation and become mature spermatozoa. So, in direct way, actually this Sertoli cell when it's stimulated by FSH, it will stimulate ataupun enhance spermatogenesis. Okay, boleh faham? Bila FSH stimulate Sertoli cell, Sertoli cell dia akan banyakkan lagi nourish pada spermatid dan spermatid lebih banyak yang akan jadi mature spermatozoa. So, ini menggambarkan dia akan accelerate ataupun dia akan stimulate uh, proses spermatogenesis itu berlaku. Okay. And then, how about the ledic cell? When the LH stimulate the ledic cell, ledic cell will secrete hormone testosterone. Pernah dengarkan? The male hormone testosterone. 
Okay, and this testosterone also will stimulate spermatogenesis. So, spermatogenesis pun berlaku dengan uh, rate yang tinggi, dengan kadar yang tinggi. Tetapi, our body, dia pandai. Okay, dia tak akan biarkan spermatogenesis itu berlaku dalam kadar yang tinggi setiap masa. So, untuk kawalan, ada kaedahnya yang dipanggil sebagai negative feedback. So, apa itu negative feedback? Negative feedback mechanism ni adalah mechanism di mana action action yang berlaku itu akan di-reduce. Okay, ataupun kita panggil sebagai uh, stimulus. Kita akan tengok action dan stimulus. Okay, kalau stimulus itu kuat, apa action yang berlaku, kita akan kurangkan. Kalau stimulus itu kurang, uh, action yang berlaku, kita akan tingkatkan. Ha, boleh faham tak? So, maksudnya benda tu adalah benda yang berlaku secara uh, indirect uh, with antagonist. Okay. So, macam dalam keadaan sekarang, spermatogenesis rate ni berlaku dalam keadaan yang tinggi. Jadi, negatif feedback perlu berlaku. Maksudnya, kita kena rendahkan. Ha, faham? Bila stimulusnya tinggi, iaitu spermatogenesis rate tinggi, so, kita kena rendahkan. Ha, jadi, nampak tak ada antagonis kat situ? Itu dipanggil sebagai negatif feedback. So, macam mana negatif feedback ni berlaku? So, when the spermatogenesis rate is high, then the sertoli cell will secrete hormone called inhibin. Okay. When the spermatogenesis rate is high, so sertoli cell will secrete hormone inhibin. And this inhibin hormone will send the negative feedback to anterior pituitary gland. So anterior pituitary gland will lower down the secretion of FSH and LH. So, when low secretion of SH, FSH and LH, for sure, the sertoli cell is less stimulated, the Leydig cell will less stimulated, so the spermatogenesis rate will be lower down, akan direndahkan, akan lebih kurang. Okay, other than that, the testosterone that secreted by Leydig cell itself Bila dia nampak spermatogenesis rate tu tinggi dan bukannya keperluan untuk terlalu tinggi. So, the testosterone itself will send the negative feedback to anterior pituitary gland and also direct to the hypothalamus. So, it, when the hypothalamus receive the negative feedback from the testosterone, it will lower down the secretion of GnRH. Okay, so when GnRH secretion lower down, anterior pituitary gland will less stimulated. And then it will less secretion of FSH and LH. So the spermatogenesis rate become low. Okay, so say repeat. Okay, this is the explanation, the role of hormone in spermatogenesis. The hypothalamus secrete gonadotropin releasing hormone GnRH GnRH will stimulate anterior pituitary gland anterior pituitary gland secrete FSH and LH the target organ for both hormone which is FSH and LH is the testis the target cell for FSH is Sertoli cell. The target cell for LH is the Leydig cell. FSH will stimulate Sertoli cell. Sertoli cell will increase the rate of spermatogenesis by increase the rate of nourish the spermatid. LH will stimulate the Leydig cell. The Leydig cell will secrete testosterone which also the hormone to stimulate the spermatogenesis.
the rate of spermatogenesis is controlled with the negative feedback mechanism. When the rate of spermatogenesis is higher, Sertoli cell will secrete inhibin. Inhibin will send negative feedback to anterior pituitary gland to lower down the secretion of FSH and LH so that Sertoli cell and Leydig cell is less stimulated and the spermatogenesis rate is being reduced. Other than that, the negative feedback mechanism also involves testosterone. Testosterone that been secreted by Leydig cell will send the negative feedback to hypothalamus and also anterior pituitary gland. So hypothalamus will secrete low GN or H. So this will cause the anterior pituitary gland will less stimulated. Then the spermatogenesis rate is being reduced. Alright. So settle about the role of hormone in milk. So if question asks you, what is the function of GnRH? Okay, the function is to stimulate anterior pituitary gland. What is the function of FSH? To stimulate Sertoli cell to nourish the sperm. What is function of LH? To stimulate Leydig cell to secrete testosterone. What is the function of testosterone? Testosterone, the function is play important role in primary uh, male characteristic. Okay. Primary sex characteristic ni adalah development of male reproductive organ. And then also secondary sex characteristic. Secondary sex characteristic ni, for example, uh, development of muscle. And then the hairy in your face, in your body. Uh, to compare lelaki dengan perempuan, lelaki lebih berbulu. Because the bulu-bulu, the hairy one, that is... From the testosterone. So, bila lelaki tu lebih banyak testosterone, lebih banyak bulu yang dia ada. Hari pagi shift, petang dah kena shift balik. So, menunjukkan tinggi gila testosterone level dia. Other than that, this testosterone also will make the male voice become deeper. Deeper daripada perempuan. Sebab orang voice orang kan pecah, garau. Semua ini disebabkan oleh testosterone. And then, how about inhibin? The hormone of inhibin play important role in negative feedback mechanism which it will cause the anterior pituitary gland less stimulated. Okay, so I think that's all for this, uh, this part which is a human reproductive system focus on male. Okay, kita recall balik apa yang kita dah belajar. First, kita dah belajar tentang male reproductive system. Second, structure of male gamete. Third, spermatogenesis and fourth, the role of hormone in spermatogenesis. So, kita jumpa in the next video, discuss about female which is more complicated. So, thank you for watching. See you in the next video. Bye.